When Chicagoans think of the popular local bands of the 70s and 80s, Mother Fox was probably not considered a household name. Yet, for 15 years, Mother Fox performed regularly throughout the greater Chicago area, Indiana and Wisconsin included, in venues such as the Regal Theater, the High Chaparral, Northwestern University, and Rush University. When the band finally retired, they left a legacy of close to 2,000 live performances, several hundred studio sessions, and numerous collaborations on recordings, some of which made the Billboard charts. As a matter of fact, the major strength of Mother Fox was each band's versatility. They all proved to be talented songwriters, producers, and entertainers. What's more is that they were always in demand as a studio session rhythm section. It wasn't uncommon to listen to an album featuring your favorite local artist and hear Mother Fox performing as the rhythm section. Mother Fox started humbly back in 1967 as four kids just trying to imitate the rock and roll artists of that era. Little did they know that months later, they would be performing their first gig as preteens in front of the Maple Park Homeowners Association. Encouraged by a loving crowd, they perform songs of the era confidently with choreographed movement and matching outfits. Thus, the band was born. Over the next several years, the band continued to gain experience by performing the music behind local singing groups and solo vocalists. They easily adapted to the musical styles such as R&B, soul, blues, rock, gospel, and even polkas. Also during these years, the band performed under various names, the earliest being the Nation Survivors. As with most bands, personnel varied and Mother Fox expanded or contracted depending on the demands of the audience. One of the more memorable performances came in 1968 when they were part of the winning act at the Regal Theater Talent Show. First prize included a recording contract and an opportunity to meet the headline artist that night. Gladys Knight and the Pips were the headliners. But interestingly, the warm-up act for Gladys that evening was the Jackson Five. The introduction to both Gladys and the Jacksons were cordial and inspirational. Eventually, the band added a lead vocalist and began working in various clubs along the Chitlin circuit. Over time, several lead vocalists came and went, but the band managed to maintain its nucleus and continued to build a solid reputation. There was even a four-year stretch where the band performed on local campuses literally every Friday and Saturday. Coincidentally, this was also the beginning of the disco era. As a result, certain audiences and record labels started demanding that artists dumb down their music to conform to the single-beat disco style. Insurrection was on the rise. As disco rose in popularity, the creative voices of soul and R&B artists grew increasingly frustrated as radio stations and record labels refused to introduce new talent while continuing to promote the disco versions of established artists' catalogs. Nonetheless, Mother Fox continued to perform, but the band members were slowly growing apart as they each searched for outlets to express their creativity. Ultimately, after one last attempt at producing, marketing and distributing their only remaining independent project, the band gradually stopped performing live. Over the next few years, the rhythm section worked with big bands and small jazz ensembles. Some members continued writing and producing for various artists and projects, but Mother Fox, the band, would be no more. Shine. 